Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background and bear with the weather. Now, when it comes to concealed carry, your options as far as ammo and different types of guns go on almost ad infinitum. But today I want to talk about two calibers that are very often compared with each other, and that's 380 ACP and 38 Special, both of which are very popular and for good reason. But there's a lot of difference of opinion and a lot of debate as to which one is better. And what I would tell you is there is no best gun or best caliber. There's just what's best for you. And you should make that decision based on doing some research and getting some good information. And hopefully today I can give you a little bit of good information. Now to start with, let's take a close-up look at the two cartridges we're talking about. On your left is a 380 ACP and on your right the 38 Special. And there's two very obvious differences. One, the 38 Special is a lot bigger. And two, the 38 Special has a rim because it's primarily a revolver cartridge, while the 380 has a recessed rim because it's primarily an auto-loading cartridge. So that's what the ammunition looks like, but what about the guns? There's a wide variety of guns in both of these calibers, but let me show you what I would consider to be the most popular for concealed carry. This is a Smith & Wesson bodyguard. It's got a six-shot magazine, and it's a true double action, so it has second strike capability. It also has an integral laser sight. And after the last shot, your slide will lock back. This is a Ruger LCP. It also has a six-shot magazine, but no second strike capability. And the slide does not lock back after the last shot. For 38 Special, again, wide variety of guns, but for concealed carry, what's most common is some kind of short barrel double action revolver. Now this one has a 1 and 7 8 inch barrel, and most of these will have a swing out 5 shot cylinder. Some concealed carry 38s will have a 6 shot, but 5 shots more common. Now this is the Smith & Wesson Model 36, and it's pretty much the standard by which all concealed carry 38s are judged. This is a Model 637 Smith & Wesson, and it's an air weight. It also has a frame-mounted firing pin, not a hammer-mounted firing pin. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 638. It's basically the same as the 637, but it has a shrouded hammer. Now, there's a lot of these that are hammerless, but this has a shrouded hammer, so the hammer won't get caught on your clothing, but you can still cock the hammer of this revolver if you choose to use a single-action capability instead of the double-action. So that's the basic rundown of what I would consider to be the most popular guns. Now let's shoot these head to head and see how they compare. So let's start with accuracy. Now the FBI has been telling us for decades that the mean average distance for a lethal confrontation is 7 yards. I'm going to push that a little. These targets are at 10 yards. And I'll shoot the target on the left with the LCP and the target on the right with the Smith & Wesson Model 637 and we'll compare the accuracy of the two. And I'm going to shoot fairly fast, such as the nature of the conditions under which you may have to use these guns. Let's take a closer look. That's how we do. But you can see that the group with the revolver is just quite a bit better. Now there was one flyer, but that was me. The LCP, even at the relatively close range of 10 yards, I just couldn't hold that good a group. And that has to do a lot with what I would call the insufficient sights on the gun. Now there's a new version of the LCP where the sights are quite a bit better. But still, most of them that are out there, that's about the best I can do with it. Now let's try a little bit different accuracy test. Now I've got two new targets put up, and I'll repeat that same drill, the LCP on the left and the 637 on the right, but this time I'll shoot from 25 yards and we'll see how I do. So how'd we do? 
Well, frankly, not all that good with either one of them. If you put a numerical score on it, with the 38 revolver I got 40 points, and with the 380 autoloader I got 29 points. So with the revolver it was quite a bit better. Also, you got to remember these targets are only one quarter size silhouettes. So what seems to be spread out over the entire target is really only about an 8 inch group. And at 25 yards, I guess that's not too bad. But now, let's try something else that's really challenging. Now I've switched to full size silhouettes and I'm going to switch guns. I'm going to shoot the target on the left with the Smith & Wesson bodyguard. This gun fits my hand a little better than the LCP does, and it has much bigger, more pronounced sights, so I may be able to shoot it a little more accurately. For the target on your right, I'm going to shoot that with the Smith & Wesson Model 36. This is a full weight gun, as where the 637 I was shooting was an air weight, and some people can shoot a full weight gun a little more accurately. So, I'm going to go back to 50 yards, shoot both of these targets, and then we'll see how these two guns compare. So how'd we do at 50 yards? Well, the first thing I want to point out is that I sighted this gun in at 15 yards. It was dead on, but at 50, I didn't even hit the paper. As where with the Model 36, I got all five on the silhouette and three of the shots in the five ring. Why is that? Well, several factors, but the biggest one being double action revolvers like this can be fired in a single action mode for a very short, crisp trigger and a lot more precise shots at long range. And that's just what I did, and that's the result. So what about the power of these two rounds? We saw earlier that the 38 Special is a lot bigger, but that does not necessarily mean more powerful. So I've got our favorite target, soda jugs. Let's shoot them and compare the results. Now to make this as fair as I can, I've got the exact same kind of ammo for both. I'm going to shoot the targets on your left with Winchester White Box 380 ACP 95 grain hollow point and the targets on your right with 38 Special Plus P 125 grain hollow point. Both of these ammunitions are made for personal protection purposes. In fact, they're both labeled personal protection right on the box. So I'll go back seven yards, shoot these soda jugs, and see what kind of results we get. Well, that was some really interesting results. The 380 looked a lot more impressive. You can see it split both of these jugs, as where the 38 just put a hole through both, and I don't even see any evidence of hollow point expansion. I wonder what that bullet looked like. However, with this much expansion and this much hydrostatic shock out of a relatively light 95 grain bullet, how much did it expand, and what kind of penetration are you going to get? Well, let's set up something a little different, see if we can answer those questions. So now we've got our one gallon water jugs backed up by our high-tech fleece bullet stop. And we'll shoot the jugs on your left with the 380 and the jugs on your right with the 38 Special. We'll shoot from seven yards and we'll look at the damage to our water jugs and we'll recover the bullets and see how much they expanded and see what we can learn from it. Okay, that was kind of fun. Now let's try that again and see if we can get a consistent result. So how'd we do? Now with the 380, you'll see that the second shot damaged the jug a lot more than the first one did, and neither of them did much damage to the jug in the back. But why so much difference? 
because there was a lot of difference in the expansion I got in these two bullets, and I'll show you a close-up of them in just a minute. By contrast, the 38 Special was very consistent in what it did, and it carried through with more energy and did more damage to the jug and back. And the consistency comes from these two bullets, although the expansion wasn't very good, it was very consistent. Now let me show you a close-up of these bullets. And you can see a significant amount of difference in the expansion of these two 380 rounds, and the damage they caused was significantly different. As where the 38 Special, although the expansion was not all that great, it was very consistent. However, more than tell us about the difference between 380 and 38 Special, it tells us a little bit about Winchester ammunition. Now let me try a different type of ammunition to see if I can illustrate my point. Now I'm going to shoot the jugs on the left and on the right with the 38 Special, but I'm going to switch ammo. I'm going to use this Remington Green and White Box 38 Special Plus P 125 grain semi-jacketed hollow point bullet. And let's see if this gives us different results than the Winchester 38 ammo did. And there's your results. You can see the Remington 38 Special hollow points expanded a lot more than the Winchesters did. And you could see that the damage they did to the jugs of water was significantly more. So it would appear not all 38 Special ammo is created equal. Now let's try a different kind of ammunition. I'll shoot the jugs on your left with this Remington Golden Saber 380 Auto, which is a 102 grain jacketed hollow point and the jugs on your right with the Remington Golden Saber 38 Special Plus P 125 grain jacket at hollow point. Now this is the same brand and same type of ammunition. Let's see what kind of difference there is. Okay, that looked pretty cool. Now let's try that again and this time I'll just use one jug. And here's our results. The Golden Saber 38 Special Ammunition expanded and it looks very pretty. However, in terms of the diameter of it, it didn't really expand any more than the regular ammunition did. Lending credence to my point that I'm not a big fan of the Hyper Ammunitions. But by contrast, the 380 ACP Golden Saber Ammunition performed a whole lot more than the Winchester White Box. So perhaps in some calibers, the hyper ammunition is what you want to go with. So what, if anything, do we learn from shooting these water jugs? Well, when shooting the two jugs in tandem, it was debatable as to which caliber did more damage to the one in front, but there's no question the 38 consistently did more damage to the jug that was in back. Also, regardless of caliber or brand of ammunition, all of the bullets when shooting through the two jugs were stopped by the first layer of fleece. But when I shot through just one jug, the 380 was still stopped by the first layer of fleece, and the 38 Special went through to the seventh layer. So what that tells us is the 38 Special, with its heavier bullet, will retain that energy and perhaps do more damage and have better effect on a bigger target. So in selecting what caliber to choose, you have to take into consideration what is it that you expect to be shooting at. Also, we can see with the inconsistency of the different brands of ammunition, that when selecting either of these calibers, especially 380, you must choose your ammunition wisely. One of the considerations in selecting a handgun for concealed carry is rate of fire. So I've got my LCP and one extra magazine, and my Model 36 and one speed loader, and a target at seven yards. So let's compare rate of fire. Now let's see how that stacks up against the five shot revolver. Let's take a closer look. 
And again, we see that I can shoot the revolver more accurately than I can the LCP, although the LCP's accuracy was sufficient. But as far as rate of fire, I shot 13 rounds out of the autoloader faster than I could shoot 10 out of the revolver. And loading a revolver with a speed loader is more technique sensitive than changing magazines on an autoloader. Now there's a few more things I want to cover. First is cost. I don't want to quote numbers because they can vary so much in different places. But quite often, guns like this LCP can be purchased for $100, even $200 less than guns like these Smith & Wesson revolvers. And that's a big consideration. You have to find something that fits your budget. Another thing is what I call program compliance, having your gun with you when you need it. Now, this 38 revolver is all steel and is kind of heavy for such a small gun. You can get air weight versions of it, and when I compare the weight of these two guns, I can't feel a difference. But the big difference is in the profile. This autoloader is much thinner than this revolver, and that makes it a lot easier to carry for some people. Also, in carrying your extra ammo, a small magazine like this is a lot flatter and a lot easier to carry than a speed loader is. And you've got to have something that's convenient to carry. Guns like this quite often get left at home or in the glove box, and they're not on you when you need them. Another thing is your rate of fire. Now we just saw a demonstration of that, and that always leads to the debate of how many rounds is enough. Well, no one can decide that for you except you. But the input I would have is, although accurate statistics on how many shots someone fires in a citizen-involved shooting are very difficult to get, estimates like three, four, five rounds, I think are reasonable. So. Quite often, the five in this revolver is sufficient. To put it in perspective, the only thing I could say is, if you take a gun like this Beretta 9mm, it has a 15-shot magazine. A gun like this Steyr 9mm has an 18-shot magazine. And I don't perceive the 18 as being a big advantage over the 15. I don't think it's likely you're going to get into a situation that you can't resolve with 15, but you do resolve with 16, 17, or 18. That just doesn't seem likely. But on the other side of that, a situation that can't be resolved with 5, but that you do resolve with the 6th or 7th round, that seems a lot more plausible. So what's the bottom line, if any, that we can take away from everything we've done here today? Well, it seems that the 38 Special, even in a snub-nosed configuration, is a little more powerful than the 380 Auto, but ammunition selection is a big part of that. We also see that the 38 Special, at least for me, these snub-nosed revolvers can be fired a lot more accurately than these small auto loaders can. And there are some good 380s out there. I'm just using these two today because they're the ones I consider the most popular for concealed carry. And even though the 38s seem to be more accurate, we see that at close range, the accuracy I was getting out of the LCP was sufficient. And you might think shooting at 50 yards was excessive. Well, no. Situations occur at 50 yards occasionally. But the big thing you've got to do is you have to get the gun that's right for you. And either one of these formats seems to have a couple of advantages and disadvantages compared to the other. And again, no one can decide what's right for you except you. So, as always, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the Snub 38 vs. 380 Auto video.